Today we're making a wave spring, and this is with the help of uh, Mr. Johnson at Autodesk, where I found this file and was able to figure out how exactly he created it. It's parametric, so we can change the dimensions to whatever we need, and it will adjust for our drawing. And I'm really creating this because I looked all over YouTube, and I could not find a inventor version of a wave spring. And I found Pro-E, and... SolidWorks and other things, but I couldn't find one for Inventor, and we needed it for a reverse engineering part we were working on. So, I guess I'll be the first to post it. Uh, let's go ahead and start by making a new part, and we're going to go over into Manage. We're going to set up some parameters that we, I guess you may or may not be used to working with. Um, click over here with Add Numeric. I want to type in a couple things like ID for inside diameter. Where I have uh, thick for the thickness, the width, and I think I'm just going to pause the video while I finish typing these in. So here are all the parameters we're going to be using. And let's go and put in some values for these. And you can put in your own values if you already know what these are. Like inside diameter, you know what that is. Uh, for the thickness is how thick the actual wire is. The width is how wide the wire is. Uh, free height is the total height of the spring. The coil height we're just using to find well, something else. So let's use a, a parameter here. Go list parameters. We're going to go free height minus the thickness. And it's not going to like this. Times 2 because that's not at times. Right now, thickness is still set to be in inches, so it's going to show up in red here. Oh, no, it didn't. It's going to be this one that shows up funny. Um, this is going to be our coil height. Let's just show parameters for that. Oop, not to mention sh list parameters. Coil height divided by terms. That's the one that comes out funny. We have to change this from inches to unitless. And that's going to be seven units. Okay, let's click done. And now we can start to make a 2D sketch. Start off with your origin, draw a circle, go back to your origin, draw another circle. Dimension the first one to be the inside diameter and the distance between the two to be the width. Go ahead and extrude that and change this to thick. Let's grab a plane and we'll offset this a distance of free height is how tall your whole coil is. Make a new sketch on here. Project your geometry. And extrude that new ring down a distance of thick. Let's turn this plane off. And let's make a new plane here for the height of one of the coils. And that is I believe it's coil spring. Let's see if that looks right. Yes, that looks about right. Okay. So we actually don't want to make it right on coil spring. We're going to take this plane and shift it down a little bit. And we're going to have the amount that we shift it down be. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I made a cheat sheet. Our thickness, negative thickness, divided by 2, because it's going down. We want to make sure it goes down. Yeah, so it's just going down a little bit, half of the thickness. All right, and let's make a new sketch on the bottom one. And let's see here, F7, we'll get rid of that top line. And we can go draw a couple of lines through here. 
Actually, ah, before we do that, let's finish this sketch. Let's go here. We want to make sure this stays visible. This is the one we're going to make a sketch on. And let's go to our origin folder and find one of these planes. Let's make a new sketch on this. Easy there. Thank you. We're going to make this projected as well as these two surfaces. Use a two point rectangle. We want to make sure it snaps up to that top plane and then it goes with the side lined up with this edge. We're going to make the thickness of this equal to thick and the width of this equal to width. We are also going to, while we're here, make a little point that lines up vertically and horizontally with this box. And I'm going to drag sketch 4 above sketch 3 so that when we go back into sketch 3 I can actually slice graphics again F7 but I can say that I want to project geometry of that point that we made here. So I do want to use that. I'm also going to grab lines. I'm going to draw a line through here. Draw a line through this top part. And these don't show up very well, but they are there. Let's project geometry of the outside and the inside circle. And then grab our trim tool. And we're going to trim off the top half and the bottom half of those lines, the inside and the outside. Okay, and when we grab our point, now that those lines are there, I can snap to a midpoint. And it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and just highlight the edge of that, so I'm only getting the line. I'm going to make that a construction line. Alright, let's finish that sketch. Make that bottom one invisible. Uncheck visibility. Alright. This one I really want to use later, but it's in the way. Hmm. It's a good way to do this. There we go. Let's offset this plane a little bit. I want to drag up. And this time it's going to be thickness divided by 2 in the positive direction, so there's no negative sign in front of it. I make a new sketch on this. F7, the slice graphics. Now I'm just looking at the top half of this. Use lines again. I'm gonna slap some stuff up here real quick. I'm gonna make all of these into construction lines. I'm going to say that this line shares a coincidence point with the origin, as does this one. And then I'm going to dimension the angle here to be 90. And the angle here to be 45. Then I'm going to project my outside and my inside circles. I'm going to trim off the bits on the outside and the inside. So just like before, I'm making myself a little line where I can snap to a midpoint, width point. I need four of those. So there's one and two and three and four. Finish your sketch and now we get to do something that we don't always get the chance to do. We're going to make a 3D sketch. It's going to be an interpolation spline. We're going to start here in the middle of our rectangle. We're just going to hit the points along the way. Let's see if I can get a little better view. There we go.
finish your sketch. And let's turn off some planes. Oop, we want to keep that one. The bottom one will turn off. This one's still important. Uh, let's do a sweep. We want that little rectangle to follow the path of this line, but we're actually going to be creating a new solid, which means that it's not going to join it to what we already had down here. It'll keep it separate, and that's what we want. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and make a mirror. Uh, we are also going to be making a, mirroring a solid, and this is going to be making a new solid as well. So let's pick our solid here, mirror plane, the one that we left visible, and select OK. And now we're going to make a rectangular pattern. We'll pick the bottom one first. And actually, let's do this first. We're going to pattern a solid, include work surfaces and features, and create new bodies. And the solid is here. The direction is Y. And here we have to do a little bit of fancy typing, but I already did it once. Type in seal, C-E-I-L times turns divided by 2 and seals is going to take your um, it rounds up the value of x to the closest integer so whatever value this is supposed to be it rounds it up and this is going to be coil spring times 2 select OK let's go to rectangular pattern again we are going to be doing patterning a solid. And this time we're going to pick the top half of our mirror. Direction is going to be the y axis again. For the top one, we're going to type in floor, F L O O R, times turns divided by 2. And that is going to round down this value to the nearest integer. Spacing is still going to be your coil spring times 2. Select OK. Right click and turn off your plane. And it looks like there's still a couple of pesky sketches on here. You can hide the visibility of that. And you have a coil spring. Now if you want to change anything, you go into your manage parameters. Uh, inside diameter, let's say this is actually three, not three and a half, and the thickness of the spring is going to be uh, 0.04 instead of 0.035. We can do that. Let's say the width of this is a half inch wide, or 0 0.7 inch, 0 0.75. We can do that. Let's change the height of this to be 1.25. All right, and you can see back behind me, this is all changing. We don't need to change these. And the number of turns, let's say we had uh, 6 instead of 7. All right, And everything should update to accommodate for those changes. Pretty neat, huh? All right, there you go. Enjoy.